to have a opportunity for uh, interaction, hopefully reasonably informal interaction between uh, those of you from the project who are interested and the members of the technical committee who are present. Um, let's start by introducing ourselves. I'm BDL Garvey. And Keith Packard. Ian Jackson. Russ Alberry. Colin Watson. Steve Langoshek. Great. It's just so, <laughs> yeah, well. Um, so what I'm going to, so in fact, um, we have present today uh, six of the eight current members of the technical committee. Uh, Andy Barth could not be here at DubConf this year, and Don was here over the weekend, I understand, though I didn't actually get to see him. I understand he's taken off for another event this week. <coughs> it, is, it is Burning Man week, after all. Um, so for those of you who don't, is there anyone who is sort of completely clueless about what the Debian Technical Committee is? Okay. There's always a straight man somewhere there. <laughs> Thanks, Rocky. Um, the Technical Committee is defined by the Debian Constitution, and it has a fairly limited but significant role in the project. Um, there are four to eight members at any given time appointed by a combination of the sitting Debian project leader and the current members of the committee. Uh, section six of the Constitution covers sort of what the um, uh, behaviors of the committee are expected to be. Uh, it's important to understand that the focus of the technical committee is supposed to be on technical policy and in places where uh, uh, action might be taken are things like uh, developers' jurisdictions overlapping and an inability to uh, come to a resolution on which of multiple technical alternatives uh, is the best one to go forward with. Uh, we tend to only act when we are explicitly asked to engage in uh, a particular decision process. The committee does have the authority to overrule a developer, though as Steve was pointing out in another session yesterday evening, there's an interesting little loophole where it does not appear that we have the ability to overrule a delegate's decision, um, which means that some infrastructure-related technical decisions could be interesting for us to deal with. Um, we have the uh, right to offer advice in addition to making sort of, you know... But only the technical committee has that right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. I think the, the, the point is it's possible for us to engage in a conversation with developers and provide, you know, some sense of wisdom without necessarily having to make a decision that requires a vote, but this always gets a little weird. Um, there are a couple of interesting sort of limiting features. One is that according to the Constitution, the committee's not really supposed to engage in the design of new proposals. Members of the committee, of course, are also developers and may very well be very involved in helping to design uh, new solutions. And it's almost impossible for a group of technologists to discuss any open question without postulating, you know, wouldn't it be nice if we had a third alternative or a fourth alternative or a fifth alternative? So. It's, this is an interesting one that you know, we can be challenged a little bit sometimes in our discussions to remember. <clears throat> and then finally, the technical committee is supposed to be a decision of last resort. Um, in almost all cases, it's better for Debian if the decisions are made by the developers who are working on the particular piece of technology. Um, and in fact, uh, Steve was commenting this morning, it's interesting that we've had a few cases in the last year where uh, issues have been brought to the committee or to some subset of the committee informally or otherwise, and we've been able to provide some advice and things have you know, been able to happen without actually having to bring a formal uh, issue in front of the committee for specific action. That's all cool, it's great. Um, the point is that we're trying to help and to help deal with situations where the normal processes of the project just aren't cutting it. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we instituted a couple of years ago was actually a, a suggestion from Zach, which has uh, worked out really well. So we re meet roughly monthly on IRC to discuss the currently open issues and you know goad each other on to do things about them. Uh, Don Armstrong has been running those meetings, uh, uh, manages an agenda that we maintain in our shared Git repository, um, and the minutes of all those meetings are available somewhere. I'm not sure where you look for them, but they are around. Um, and of course, anyone who'd like is welcome to hang out with us on the 
the appropriate IRC channel at the right time and, and watch the discussion. Uh, over the last year, <coughs> been kind of an interesting year for the committee. There are five things that uh, were sort of officially brought to the committee and got resolved uh, since uh, Deb Conf and Vomar coup last year. That started with uh, adding a new member to the technical committee. Keith uh, was not a member of the TC in Vo Vomar coup last year and is now. Uh, that concluded a fairly long process, which I must apologize, was made longer because of various things that were going on in my life, but <coughs> um, we did eventually conclude and we now have a full eight, which is the maximum number of members the committee is currently allowed to have under the Constitution. Um, I'm sure you'll all be shocked to hear that we spent a little bit of time on init systems in the last year. <coughs> there was then a follow-up uh, issue that was brought uh, based on uh, behaviors coming out of that decision. Uh, we recently finally got around to voting on the question of what the default libjpeg implementation for Jesse should be. And I put on here as resolved, even though it hasn't actually had a closure email yet, um, this question of uh, what the appropriate uh, and this is of alternate dependencies on non-free things in Maine. Um, we have all eight members of the committee have now cast votes. The uh, result is no longer in doubt, but given everything that was happening in the run-up to DevConf here, the closure email on that hasn't actually happened yet, but that's at this point, I think, resolved and okay to put on that list. There are four issues uh, sort of officially before the committee right now. The first two have actually been on our list for multiple years. Uh, the first one um, started as a proposed constitutional tweak to fix a technical committee supermajority issue in the Constitution. Um, given the events of the last year, that has not surprisingly now sort of exploded into, I think, six-ish? About six. About six subtopics, all relating to uh, the membership of the committee, what the terms of, uh, uh, the, the duration of terms of service on the technical committee, committee should be, how the tech committee chairman should be chosen, how, you know, there's a bunch of logistics things about the committee. Uh, there's a suggestion that uh, changing the constitution to go from eight to nine members, uh, having an odd number might reduce the frequency with which the casting vote, which has now been used once, um, <coughs> might ever have to be used again. All of those are good things. Uh, all of them are the sorts of things we want to get right and not rush into, so I'm sure there'll be a lot more conversation before we wrap that up, but uh, there has been a lot of progress on that. The list of decisions on the web page being incomplete, someday somebody will sit down and actually backfill all that, maybe. Um, there's an open question about menu systems. This has to do with the uh, Debian menu versus uh, the freedesktop.org menu specification uh, files, and you know, what, why we have sort of two different ways for specifying GUI application menu entries. Um, there's a draft proposal that Keith put together that we've had, I guess, a couple of rounds of conversation about in our monthly IRC meetings. There's certainly some more work to do before we're ready to take that to a vote, though, I think. Um, and then relatively recently, the question of the maintainership of the aptitude package has been brought to us. And, been some conversation about that. I don't know that I at least feel like we're very close to any sort of specific decision on that. I guess before we just open up to questions from the floor, is there anything that any of you would like to add in the way of comments about either the things that got resolved in the last year or the things that are open right now, or should we just open up and see what people want to talk about? Okay, so with that, um, we're open to questions. Um, this mic is loose. I don't know if we have an another one in the room or not, but uh, if you would like to ask a question or have something you'd like to say, uh, procedural, technical, whatever, um, raise a hand or something, and we'll be happy to take questions and converse about things as long as we have time. Questions? Oh, come on. I'll go ahead. I'll vamp for a little bit while, oh, we've got a question there in the back, and I'll talk as I deliver the microphone. So one thing I'm interested to know. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I'm interested to know from this group, just as an informal poll, as, as B. Dale mentioned, we did discover that the, uh, there's an unintended consequence of the fact that so many people are now delegated into their roles in Debian, which is now we've found, and the, the secretary has actually ruled on this as a constitutional interpretation, saying that we, in fact, don't have the authority as the technical <coughs> committee to overrule delegates in their decisions, um, which means nobody does 
as far as I can tell, other than like doing a straight GR every time. So I'm, I'm interested to know, maybe we can get some discussion about that here, um, but I'll pass the mic first to see whether, the, whether people think that's something we should fix. How, how elaborate do you want, do you prefer the questions forwarded to the technical committee? Because I have in mind the question of LibAV and FFmpeg, and would you like to have the bug report <laughs> with just these two words or some reasoning? Or how? Because I think this question so is imminent that it has to be decided. But um, yeah. here, there's no reason for me to come up like pull it off. <laughs> Sure. Uh, I think it, it really helps when the tech committee doesn't have to go do a bunch of investigation that other people already know. Uh, one of the reasons LibJPEG took so long was that we had to go, well, partly because we were all distracted with certain other uh, extremely long threads, and uh, partly because uh, we had to go chase up a bunch of potential argument for one side or another that had not really been fully presented in the thread. And it's much easier if we actually have the arguments right there in front of us uh, and then we're not left trying to effectively <coughs> work out what one side, of, one side of the argument or the other might be on our own. So, so I mean, if, if there's something that's causing a problem and it needs to be escalated, it would be better to escalate it sooner when it needs to be than to spend a lot of time trying to write up some kind of summary and have it agreed by everybody. Um, this is particularly true if the thing is, if, if it's very political and very controversial. For a, for a simple technical thing, I'd certainly encourage people to try and write up the dispute in some, you know, neutral, friendly, constructive way. Um, but some issues that is more difficult, in which case um, we really we're going to need everybody to put their own side, um, and in that case, just filing a bug against the TC is probably the right approach. That being, that being said, a little bit of expectation management here. The question that's being posed on Debian Devel right now is, can we have, well, there's two questions. Can we have FFmpeg back in for Jesse, and can we switch between libav and FFmpeg for Jesse? And the Jesse freeze is coming up. Um, prospects of the technical committee being able to resolve this in the absence of the wider developer be community being able to resolve it on their own in the, in the time required to, to make a decision for Jesse seems dicey. <laughs> also, uh, aren't both the security team and the release team delegated? <laughs> <laughs> you can offer advice. They've only said they don't want both of them in. We, oh. could, we could pick a different default without overriding either team. And in practice, while we may not have the constitutional authority to overrule them, um, our relationship with the delegated teams is in fact very good. And yeah. um, if we suggested to a delegated team that we would like a particular outcome, I think um, this that, okay. that, yeah, 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 that, that, that wouldn't really be too, too big a problem, uh, unless we were completely mad, and hopefully we're not. <laughs> yeah, I, I, was mo I was mostly kidding on that. <laughs> Hi. Um, so, sh is, is it fine for me to just sit here? Or? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Sam Hartman, I guess I'd like to really thank you for doing an excellent job over last year. Um, there's been a lot of mail on the technical committee mailing list. <laughs> um, and one of the things I really appreciate is that there have actually been a couple of times when, you know, I see red when I read, read mail from from the, that I, I happen to have a different opinion on. Interestingly, not having to do with the systems. Um, but the thing is that I really appreciate that, that even then, the mail is written from a heartfelt desire to constructively make the project better. And I am really happy at all of the things in a number of threads, especially the init system thread, but throughout everything, where it's clear that you guys are trying to work together while 
actually understanding that there are some options that are unacceptable to some members of the TC. And that's okay. Thanks for doing a great job. Thank you. So, um, there's been this trend of trying to organize more sprints so people who get to meet face to face. I was wondering if, for example, for an issue that took as long as the init system, would you could could uh, flying all the TC together in one place would have uh, so shorten, shortened the uh, resolution period? I think it probably would have done, but it would have other effects that we might not want. Uh, the The problem we'd run into, I think, would be that the transparency of that kind of thing would be problematic. We would have to video the entire meeting or something. Um, right. Right. I, I mean, uh, that that could be done. Um, it would end up looking more like a UN Security Council session or something. You know, we'd all be we'd all be stood round a table, and there'd be a microphone each. And when we broke for lunch, we wouldn't be allowed to talk about anything. <laughs> you know, we we just have to talk about the weather. That's what says we're already not allowed to. <laughs> right. But if we wanted to, if we wanted to, like, you know, make that a transparent process, we would have to go to those kind of lengths and. That I, I, I'm not sure how much fun that would be. Also, some of us travel better than others. Yeah. I'm not sure I really want to be flying around the country. Well, I was going to say too that the fact that there are six of us here in one place at one time is actually fairly unusual, and uh, it's not that it hasn't happened before, but uh, d uh, opportunities other than DebConf to get us all sufficiently motivated to put the rest of our lives aside to go somewhere at the same time together are really difficult to orchestrate. And I think it would be very hard to do on short notice. And so the idea that you know something's getting escalating to the point where that would be a good process to invoke and that you could actually get all of us to get together in one place quickly, you know, it, it sounds like a great idea and I'm sure most of us would actually, you know, be happy to try it, um, particularly if there were you know, good food involved. But <clears throat> um, you know, at the end of the day, um, it, as frustrating as it can be sometimes to watch the process, and believe me, it's just as frustrating to be involved in the process sometimes. Um, I have to tell you that uh, the fact that sort of everything every one of us thinks about the issue about each other and so forth ends up being you know documented in an email thread that Don says now helps stress test the VTS. Um, <coughs> the, these are the sorts of things this generates, you know, it's a documentation record for everybody that comes afterwards understanding how we got to where we were and why we made the decisions we did. And that degree of openness is really, really hard to even contemplate wanting to move away from. The other thing that I would add to that is, is that uh, I at least um, think differently when I'm writing things up in email than when I'm discussing them in person. So I find it much easier to reach a to reach a shared decision in person uh, in ways that are possibly not good because it's it's a lot easier to fall into sort of a groupthink consensus when you're all in the same room. Um, whereas when I'm trying to write up detailed arguments on a thread, it makes me think harder, and sometimes I end up convincing myself of something different in the process of writing the the, the argument. Yeah, and to some degree, the arguments we have to present, there's kind of an essay aspect to the work we do to do that, which you don't have in, in the course of like a, a stand-up sort of face-to-face -face spoken meeting. Um, and that's that's useful um, in, in part for the transparency, in part because it, it challenges us to articulate our arguments better. Other questions? Oh, come on. Let's 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 use the rest of the time to, to work through the constitutional issues. We can just use the rest of the BOF to, to sit here and and on display. We can talk through the constitutional issues. <laughs> so I, I I'd like to have some uh, informal poll of my own. Um, how many people? would th uh, think that not having the tech committee would be an improvement. Yeah. I, th I think... 
<laughs> no, in general, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, so how would you like to do that? Show of hands good? What's the alternative? GR as decision of last resort? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so show of hands. How many people would prefer a Debian project in which there were no technical committee and decisions of last resort went to a GR? <laughs> the others might not be in the room. <laughs> That's completely well, fair. That's not the well. Right. And <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we didn't hand out rotten fruit in advance, so I'm not sure how best to do this. But yes, right. Show of hands. How many folks think the current constitutional structure with a technical committee to make decisions of last resort is a good system? Okay. Well, certainly of the folks in the room, that seems. <laughs> I we're accusing ourselves. I was going to say this seems like a good. So I guess uh, maybe it's interesting to explore that a little bit. Do you feel that the technical committee? Do you, do you feel that way because you think the technical committee has made poor decisions? That it's that there's a lack of of legitimacy to the decisions that it makes, um, or is it just because you like GRs? <laughs> So I definitely don't like GRs, <laughs> uh, but I also fear that the technical committee is, as a self-selected group of people, is not working. Uh, I mean, as well as, as it could be, and. Um, it seems like your, or I fear that it's become a more um, tempted to override people for something where um, it's their area of responsibility. They are the choice that they've made. You might disagree with the choice, but I mean. Um, I think even if you disagree with the choice that somebody's made, and when it's their area of responsibility, the uh, threshold for saying, I disagree with you, uh, f from saying that to uh, I overrule your decision should be higher. May I ask? Uh, Julia. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, that, that's, you know, that's, a, that's, a, that's a perfectly valid point of view. Um, Bidel, can you put the list of decisions from last, from this last year back up? Um, so we'd actually do better one year previously. Yeah. Right. So this this does not include us having overruled anybody. Uh, the previous year we overruled Gilgam on multi arch, and you could argue about whether libjpeg. We didn't actually formally use the overriding par, but it was kind of. Getting the edge of it. Well, I mean, that was like two camps. There's the libjpeg turbo camp and the libjpeg eight camp, and um, y it's a bit. It's a. There's a difference between us saying, "Well, we're going to overturn the status quo," when really there are. It, it's not really obvious that that the libjpeg eight mm -hmm. camp just by having got there first. I mean, maybe you disagree, but it doesn't feel like overruling to me. Um, but the Gilliam's multi-arch thing was probably the biggest decision we took in the previous year. Um, no, and I, mm, no work manager. Oh I think yeah. Yeah. He, the network manager was the most contentious decision that we took, and we did overrule there. Um, now you can, you know, maybe maybe that's what the kind of thing you're thinking of. Um, I think the, the decision with the biggest impact on the project was the multi arch decision. Uh, and it, having looked at what's happened since, I think we were, I now think we were probably right to do that. It's not completely clear, but I'm not unhappy that that's what we did. Um. I also wanted to add, you know, I mentioned when we were talking about the open bug about the supermajority fix and so forth that that's now popped into about a half dozen subtopics. 
and a couple of them are specifically about the composition of the committee, whether there should be something like a term limit on participation in the committee. Um, I think the current best idea for managing the chairmanship of the committee was the notion that the committee ought to elect its chairman every time there was a change in the membership or composition of the committee. There are a number of things like that that are currently, um, that we're currently discussing that might sort of affect the other side of this, which is you know, how do you know that the committee remains sort of vital, responsible, connected to the project and all of those sorts of things. And this is why I say I don't think we're really quite ready to, you know, vote in the large on exactly what the constitutional change should be because I don't know that we've really gotten to the end of the thought process about how that should work. Uh, inputs today or at other times about, you know, your thinking about how that should work, particularly if you're willing to go look at some of the discussion we've had, particularly in our IRC meeting logs about this topic. and. You know, let us know what you think of some of the proposals that are floating around. Um, the sort of how people get on the committee, you know, whether it should be a more elected kind of thing or, or whether the current process of selection remains the right one with some tweaks around sort of term limiting kind of things or not, I suspect is another topic that we could have some really interesting conversation about. Um, but I would suggest that you think about both sides of that. One side is sort of the the how do decisions get made and how does overruling happen and so forth and the other is the sort of how, how, how do you actually decide whether you're able to trust that the people making up the committee you know are sort of doing the honorable thing at all times and those are I think both reasonable topics for us to have lots of conversation about. And regarding the the actual matter of, of overruling of, of maintainers, I've I know this is a, a common sentiment. Nobody likes to to be overruled. Nobody likes to see their peers overruled. Um, but there's two two points that I think we should look at there. One is as has been pointed out, the actual frequency with which overruling uh, a true overrule happens, and the other is the aspect that. Um, even having the question come up is very psychically draining for a maintainer or a developer to, to even have to go through that process. And yes, when that happens, it's not not good. Um, well, we don't however, the to inject ourselves, right? Because right, the technical committee does not, as a body, initiate that process. Those things, the questions of overruling a maintainer only arise because some developer is concerned that the, the wrong decision has been made. Uh, the, it's, it's, Probably also worth pointing out that the only times this ever comes up are essentially when things have already gone badly wrong. You know, somebody is, somebody is very dissatisfied enough to crank the process up to 11 and, uh, and, and bring it to the tech committee. That's maybe been a little more frequent now than it has been in pre previous years. But uh, the, it's, it's, not, it's generally not obvious that doing nothing would be an improvement. Uh, there's um, there's always some project-wide or at least very large contention involved before it gets anywhere near us. So we essentially only deal with things that are already in a bad state. Uh, there are yeah, it's one more quick thing I wanted to say on that topic, though. It's uh, that um, the other problem with that whole. Uh, with with that, with all of that is is that while overriding and even discussing an override is hugely psychically draining and hard for the people involved, the other side of that is is that not having a decision is also psychically draining, and so one of the things that that hopefully the technical committee helps with, and I think that that. Our track record has been mixed in part because it takes us so long to make decisions for other good reasons, is that if you reach some sense of closure, sometimes that's better even if you lose. Right. I mean, what you don't see, interestingly, on that is we get quite a few incoming issues of one kind or another where the submitter is, 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 is aggrieved somehow and usually just like one member of the technical committee writes back and says really we're we're not we don't think we're going to overrule the maintainer on this this is just this you know you haven't explained what the problem is or this isn't serious enough or whatever the whatever the situation is and essentially that really you know that that helps the maintainer to to not have to deal with that issue anymore because essentially the 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 complainants' roots avenues have been closed off. But there's another thing I wanted to say, which is, you know, we, we don't like being overruled, 
Um, Debian, of course, in theory, we put the needs of our users first. And what that means is that as a maintainer, our responsibility is to our users. And if a maintainer is failing in that responsibility, it's the responsibility of the project as a whole to set them straight. And obviously, that's not necessarily a pleasant experience for the maintainer, but most of us are users too, right? So we've been on the other side of a bug report where the maintainer seems not to be listening. And behind each one of us who's articulate enough to have a, you know, to try and have that conversation with the maintainer and who understands the process well enough to, to deal with that, there's probably a bunch of users who are upset and don't know what to do about it. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yes. So I'm Anud, and I have one comment and a question. The comment is that being overruled by a GR is probably worse than being <laughs> overruled by the technical committee. Uh, there are far more relationship damaged if you are overruled by a GR. <clears throat> so the question that I have for the TC is, in the past, one of the reasons people didn't bring things before the TC was the lag time before a decision could be reached. I understand that while I have been missing, things have improved because we, the TC never used to have that many decisions in a year. <laughs> Very true. Is this something that you guys are considering streamlining, or are there ways that we could reach consensus faster? I mean, flying people together was one of the ways that people are proposing getting there, but if that's not the answer, what else is? So, so actually, as I mentioned earlier, Zach's suggestion a couple of, I guess it was actually in Banya Luka that we had that. I think it was then that we had the conversation. It took a little while to get started, but this business of having a, w a monthly IRC meeting has been, I think, really helpful because it causes all of us to have sort of a, a pseudo deadline once a month to go remind ourselves what our action items were and decide whether we have time to do something in the last hour before the meeting. Um, if you, if, if you yes. grasp my activity, it would. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but honestly, I think just reminding ourselves on a regular cadence of what issues are open and where they are and, and who said they'd do what, who hasn't gotten to it yet, and should somebody else try to pick that up has been really helpful. So concretely, things have improved. If you come to the TC now with a decision that's not enormously politically charged and where most of the TC members agree one way or the other, you'll probably have a decision in a month or two or maybe three. Now, that sounds like a very long time, but given how long it takes to make any other kind of decision in Debian, particularly a decision to change anything, that's, that's kind of lightning fast by Debian standards. So, so <laughs> um, it's been faster. And, and we have sometimes been faster. We, we, you know, we, we've managed one week. So, uh, sorry, I, a number of things accumulated. Um, one, I guess, I don't, di uh, seconding what Manoj said, don't discount the possibility that the reason you're seeing more overrides is that you're actually effective these days. Um, and that basically it's not that people are being more litigious, it's that issues that people wouldn't, would have just taken the hit to say, I'll never get this fixed, I have no recourse, they're realizing they have recourse. And I think that's a good for the project. Number two, I don't know how I feel personally, but BDL asked the question of, um, or no, I guess Steve asked the question of, should, we, should the TC be able to override delegates? Um, I'm still pondering this, but here's um, a devil's advocate argument for why not, um, which is that the important thing, or an important thing from a governance standpoint is to have a check and balance. Um, on individual decisions to help keep them in alignment with, with the project. Um, for individual maintainers, there isn't really a check and balance besides the TC and peer pressure. Uh, GRs are an option of even last resort, but they're really heavyweight. 
Um, but for delegates, there are a couple of check and balances. First of all, we tend to delegate teams rather than individuals. Um, second of all, while the while you can't be undelegated, while while the DPL can't revoke it, can't you know um, do something because of a decision, your track record can be considered in whether a delegation is removed. And so there are other checks and balances, um, and. You know, it would be, and it would also be good from a governance standpoint not to have a body having too much power. Um, one thing that it would be interesting to look at is do a retrospective on some of, of your issues um, that you raised and how effective it, it's been. I will call two to mind. One is network manager. Um, you know, I'll note that there was a lot of effort and heartache spent on network manager, and yet the way it ended up. Pretty much, you get Network Manager if you install GNOME. Um, and it really is kind of hard not to get it. And um, it's still the case that you can get into situations where your networking doesn't work um, if you install a system and you know Network Manager thinks it's supposed to be managing it, and, and yet there's net and Etsy interfaces involved. I've actually seen, particularly on live DVD installs, getting into some kind of impressive um, Network Manager fights with the rest of the system issues. So you know, was it actually worth the pain there? And I don't know what the answer is, but it, it might be worth going back and thinking about that. And then I'll get on system D. Um, you know, it's really hard to install a system without a Jesse system without system D is PID1 if you install any significant set of software. And I don't think that was quite what was envisioned uh, during the discussions. It was exactly it was what I was. Was exactly No, 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 okay. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Ian. I'm sorry, Ian. I do not believe that that was what the people voting for System D quite uh, envisioned at the end of that TC discussion. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. But but okay. But anyway. Um, and, and one final note is you talk about how painful it is to override a, a, a maintainer. There are skills in terms of empathic communication and working with people to actually communicate with them in less painful ways that it actually would probably be worth the TC spending time learning. Um, because we actually, as a project, could work to make disagreements less painful and you as leaders could help lead the way. Interesting thought, Sam, thanks. It is on. I don't know if it's turning. So is that working? Okay, cool. Um, one, one, one uh, <coughs> comment on the, the system D thing and like what's happened subsequently. Um, well, it was something that we discussed as a possible thing that could happen during the discussion. Um, I at least was completely surprised by the speed at which Canonical uh, essentially moved away from Upstart, and that significantly changes w the, the the what it looks like going forward in the archive for multiple net systems. Um, because that was like the other big one, right? So I think that some of the some of the reason why now it looks like System D all the time was because Canonical made this decision like almost immediately after the decision. And Steve probably has more insight into that, but that was at least to me that was a large, that was a significant surprise. The reason it looks like System D all the time is because of some of these questions of how good does the compatibility have to be for things like login D to allow it as an alternative have led to the desktop systems which do require. A, a Dbus interface which is provided by system D and they're pulling in system D by default. Um, we're at the point today where I think even now testing, I think if you install GNOME it pulls in system D as PID1. And there's some, some a little bit of work that we may have to do to, to clean that up yet. Um, I don't know exactly where that stands. I, th I, think, I think system D in the, in the archive in testing has the necessary um, um, or dependency, but that the version of systemd shim that has made it into testing um, isn't at a level that provides that compatibility. So that's actually, that's, that's my fail for not following through on that. Um, and I'm working with the FTP team to fix that. <laughs> um, can, I, can I stand up and have a show of hands? Can I do this? Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Um, my name's Martin. I just wanted to follow up on something that Russ said earlier. Um, he, I'm going to quote you, not verbatim, but uh, he said that sometimes closure 
is uh, worthwhile to work for and you don't necessarily need consensus for everything. I would like to put you in the situation that we are in. We are a group of people that are volunteers and working on a common goal. We also have a technical committee that we have all voted early on to be the sort of like neutral objective body to make final decisions in case we can't come up with them. I would really like to see a show of hands in this uh, very representative crowd of the Debian <laughs> project um, between what you would really prefer if, if you had to choose one of the two. Option one being endless discussions for the discussion until you have <laughs> until you have consensus which we have been known to reach so this is not a garden path dead end it's just going to take a long time and option two realizing at some point in time that this is going to take a long time so deferring it to a committee who then makes a decision that not everybody likes but brings us closure all right there's only two options. <laughs> you, 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 you ratify the proposal. Or you further further discussion. discussion is part of the proposal A. Yeah, <laughs> so can I see a show of hands uh, for those people who would prefer option A, which is long discussions until you have consensus? This is a bad question because the reason that you have the technical committee is that you hope that these people are sensible enough to strike a balance between those two options. Sure. So there, there is no question. They're there to decide what is the right balance between those two extremes. Actually, if we modify the, uh, the proposal one for Martin. <laughs> are we, yeah, are we taking uh, amendments? In, instead of a going for an absolute consensus, if we decide to go for a rough consensus instead, where you don't need to have absolutely the last project member agreeing, uh, that might be more reasonable than discussion until everybody is convinced. As the newest member of the technical committee, um, I was a little unaware of the long history of the process of the technical committee. Um, and I was, uh, the init system debate, while well, I think contentious within the committee, What's the one for? So we only have one minute left? Okay. <laughs> faster, faster. Okay. Um, while it was very contentious, I think what it raised within the technical committee was the notion that the technical committee itself does not have to come to consensus to resolve an issue and that our existing voting process was sufficient in order to come to closure. Um, it didn't make everybody happy, but I think if the technical committee would take a more a uh, principled view on using, uh, constructing a vote and taking a vote and calling the re uh, issue at an end uh, when issues are clearly not going to be resolved quickly, that we could make process, we could make progress more quickly. Um, oftentimes we do spend a lot of time in the technical committee trying to generate total consensus among the technical committee. And for some issues that makes a lot of sense, but I think we need to be more aggressive in taking votes instead and getting to majority or rough consensus, as Manoj says, um, instead of trying to get to uh, a total consensus of the committee and using our existing process to resolve issues more quickly with a, with by coming to rough consensus or even just majority seems like a process that we should be using more often rather than less often. Okay, well, I think with that, we really are just about out of time. Ian, do you want to... I, I, I have one thing that I wanted to say to in response to Sam, which is um, mm -hmm. Sam mentioned the network manager and we mentioned System D, and um, I think that a thing that has really disappointed me over the last couple of years in the attitudes of some of my colleagues is um, their position towards the defense of minorities in Debian, by which I don't mean, you know, blacks and gays. I mean people who choose a decision that is unpopular. And recently we've seen a lot of those communities losing out. And I'm hoping that this won't carry on. Okay, well with that, I think we really are out of time. Thank you very much for being here. Um, I know that most of us are gonna be around for at least part of the week. We certainly would encourage you to come find us, have more conversation, ask questions. 
uh, this discussion, the technical committee processes, et cetera, don't stop at the end of this meeting. They keep going. So feel free to stay engaged and, and help us in any way that you would like to. Thank you very much for your time and attention.